lot of you guys have been asking for a how-to on the Warhammer, so I did some scheming, and here's what I came up with. It's basically the exact same design as the Penguin from Homemade Weapons 4, only this is covered in all these zinc-plated steel flat bars that hold everything together a lot better. But it's still got everything you know and love about the Penguin. It's got the cross design for a maximum PSI in every hit. It's got the armor punching spike on the back. It's got the bone breaker shaft. It's got the spike on the handle. Really the only thing that's changed is it's more durable this time around. And also, I don't know if you can tell, but this is actually a lot smaller than the other one. The other one was 30 inches. This is 22 and a half inches. But if you want to know how to make the bigger one, really, just figure it out. I mean, if you want this but bigger, literally just do this, but bigger. So here's what you need to make this one. A steel flat bar, and this one is one and a half by one quarter by 36 inch. One of these zinc plated steel flat bars with the holes punched out of it. It's uh, one and three eighths by one sixteenth by 36 inch, and then an angle iron. This one's one and a quarter by one eighth by 36. I wasn't sure how many sets I would need, so I got 14 sets of nuts, bolts, washers, and lock washers. They're three eighth inch, and then you're gonna need a drill bit that is also three eighths of an inch and a drill, obviously. An angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and a grinding wheel. And then for the handle, any sort of quarter inch wood or board that you can find. This is just some craft board from Home Depot. And to wrap it, we're gonna use some paracord. All right, sorry, I got kind of ahead of myself and I cut off a 20 inch piece of the angle iron, but it really doesn't change much. All you gotta do, take a Sharpie, use it to draw a big line every five inches on the outside of it. Then measure from the corner to two inches in and draw a diagonal line from this corner and do that on both sides. And then do the exact same thing on the next five inch section, but then on the next five inch section, do it only on one side and then on the next one on the opposing side. Now on the flat bar, two and a half inches in, and then from this line to this line, four inches, and then do that same thing. Measure from this corner to here, two inches, and draw the diagonal line. Now all we're gonna do is just cut all of the lines so that what you end up with is this, and a big pile of triangles. We're gonna save these for a different project. Ow! Ow. Don't touch steel after it's been cut, kids, because it's freaking hot your flat bar, clamp this part in a vise, and then cut the lines in this order. You can cut them in whatever way that you want, but that would just make it easiest. So here it is with all the cuts made. Now when these zinc plated flat bars come off the factory line, they cut it right in the middle of one of these punches, but what you're gonna wanna do is cut right in between the punch so that it ends up looking like this. Then you take your Sharpie again, mark out four sections, three of the sections containing seven punches, and then the last section containing 13 punches. If you're not using this punch steel that's roughly five and a quarter inches for the small pieces and then nine and three quarter inches for the big piece and then obviously cut these out with the grinder now you got to bend all of these at the center punch but you can't just fold them right in half you got to do it in kind of a special way first you got to sing happy birthday to them happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear zinc plated steel punched flat bar Happy birthday to you, and you guys suck. Then take your section of quarter inch steel flat bar and clamp it in the vise with your punch steel flat bar and level it with the center punch about right there. And then just do your very best to bend this over and curl it as tight as you can over the edge of this. You can use a hammer. I forgot where my blacksmithing hammer is, but yeah, just do whatever. smaller 
pieces, then take two of the angle iron pieces that have the different edges and line them up on a flat surface like this piece of wood, like this. Then we're gonna take one of these pieces, slide it on here as far down as it'll go, then clamp it in the vise like this. Then we're gonna take a C clamp, clamp it there, and then take a hammer and make sure that there's no more space left right there, like that. And then just do the same thing with the other one. Now take your flat bar, measure out 22 and a half inches, mark it with your Sharpie, and then cut it with the angle grinder. To bend the long strip and the remaining short strip, we're gonna use the same method that we used to bend the other two little ones, except instead of just using one section of the steel flat bar, we're gonna stack two on top of each other so that it's a double thickness that we're bending it around, but you just do the exact same thing. So in the end, here's what you end up with. So now we're finally gonna start assembling the hammerhead. Just do the same thing that you did before when we were making the brackets. Just put it on a level surface, take the bracket, put it on, slide it all the way down. Now clamp it really carefully right here to make sure that none of the pieces slide around and go uneven. Make sure that there's no space underneath the bracket between that and the irons. And then we're gonna bring it over to the vise again. Clamp it really, really tight, make sure it's not going anywhere, and then you can take the clamp off. And now that the clamp is off, we take our trusty drill and drill right through the punch. And if you got this whole thing lined up properly, it should go through this punch and come right out that one. So we got the hole drilled through and it's about as close to perfect as I'm gonna get. So then you take your bolt, put it through, then take your washer next, put that on the other side, take your lock washer, put that on that side too, and then put the nut on. Then just use a ratchet to tighten it until the lock washer is completely flat. Take it out, flip it upside down, clamp it back in the vise, and do the same thing with this punch right here. So what you end up with is this. Now you just make another one of these. Now here's how we're gonna combine both halves of the hammerhead. We line up both of the pieces, and then this part right here that doesn't have the slant cut in it, that one's gonna get the long bracket. So you put that on there. That's gonna be really loose fitting because we haven't put the spacer in yet. And then you take the smaller bracket that has the double wide opening in it. You put that on right there. Then you flip it over. And then we're gonna take that two and a half inch spacer that we made towards the beginning of the video. We drop it in between the two pieces. Use something to push it down with. Then once it's at the bottom, the brackets should stay on there by themselves, just to make it a little easier to handle. But from here, you just press on the sides, press this down, and do everything to make sure that everything's all evened out. And then once it's all evened out, you can drill your hole right there and right there and put the nuts and the bolts through. So I decided to put these two bolts one punch back further than I thought I was going to originally because I didn't want this bolt to interfere with the ratchet, but it really doesn't make that much of a difference. So now we're gonna attach the head to this part. All you gotta do is take it, slide it in here. You might have to pound it in there a little bit. Then once you got it in there and you make sure that it's pressed all the way up against the first spacer that you put in there at the top and on the bottom, then you can proceed to drill your next two holes right there and right there. Now all that's really left for the construction of the head is sliding the armor punching spike into the back of it and putting the two bolts in it. For a second, I was afraid my drill died while I was this close to being done. This is literally the last bolt that I need to put in, and it almost died right there. Thank God for CPR. No, but in all seriousness, guys, this is really hard on the drill, all this drilling. It's probably gone through about three or three and a half inches of steel at this point. But, you know, I don't have a welder, so this is what I got to do, and if I got to go through a drill to get you guys this video then i'm gonna do it but hopefully someday i will be able to get a welder so i don't have to put the drill through this kind of abuse but that day is not today so i'm gonna give this thing a few minutes to cool off maybe an hour and then i'm gonna get right back to it so the hammerhead is finished pretty freaking terrifying if you ask me all that's really left is the handle and the spike 
on the end of the handle. To make the spike, I'm just going to cut a diagonal line right here, and then I'll add the handle, but right before I add the handle, I'm going to completely take apart the hammerhead, and I'm going to paint everything besides the zinc-plated steel flat bars and the bolts. I'm going to paint it all flat black. So I got it all painted black, now all I have to do is add the handle to it, and I think I'm going with tactical black instead of red, like in the beginning of the video, and like on the bigger hammer. Sorry for getting a little disoriented from me changing things around so crazily. We just finished up the handle, and there you go. 22 and a half inches of good old-fashioned zombie apocalypse insurance. So I got it here next to a couple of likely suspects for a lot of people out there to be all, Duh, that's dumb, why not just use this instead of that? Well, I'll tell you why. In the weapon demonstration video. And also remember, this is a one-handed weapon. If you want to see the big daddy hammer that started it all, click here. And I just realized this would be a pretty sweet partner weapon for the saw blade tomahawk. If you want to learn how to make this, click here. And if you're like, what the heck, why'd you skip showing us how to make the handle? That's because you can click right here to learn how to make the handle. Well, looks like that's all the time we got for today, folks. So uh, I'm not going to ask you to do anything weird. Just if you like the video, go ahead and click like on the video. Or thumb it up or whatever the heck they're doing on YouTube during this particular span of 20 minutes. Or, how about you be a pal and share the video with some of your other pals? Or not. Whatever. Whatever the heck you want to do. I gotta go back inside. My lips are going stiff. My head is freaking cold with this current lack of hair. And my hand is going numb because I can't wear a glove on it while I'm operating the camera. So yeah, like it, share it, favorite it, whatever the heck you want to do. Um, I'll talk to you later, guys. Uh, see ya. Bye.